Hello all, Rick here today with a discussion video. So, this video is a little more subjective because it's mostly based on observation and making educated guesses, which is like 70% of the stuff I do anyway, but ignoring that, I thought I'd make a video looking at just what each species or interstellar power in Star Trek is best at. There are a lot of stereotypes around the different science fiction races of Trek, such as Klingons making good warriors, Romulans are sneaky and humans are jack of all trades and tenacious, but I thought rather than look at these cultural aspects, which I have a whole video series on anyway, I could look into what each group puts out in terms of technology and activities. For example, who would you approach first if you needed a new warp core? For this, I will be drawing from both primary on-screen content and surrounding Apocrypha. Starting with the Federation, which is a little tricky I guess because it encompasses numerous species and scientific developments of all its member worlds. So a general overview it is then. Basically the Federation was founded on the principles of mutual cooperation, sharing of resources and development, and the exchange and growth of cultural ideals, and most relevant to this video, exploration. Starfleet, from its inception, was to be the humans and later the Federation's exploratory arm as well as its defence force. This prioritised certain technologies above others when it came to their vessels, most notably their warp program and sensor systems. Although in 2151 their warp program was further behind other powers of the time, like the Vulcans, progress was rapid and their sensors were arguably on par, if not better, than their neighbours. This is even commented on in Enterprise, when people remark at the amount of information gleaned by scans from the NX-01 Enterprise in such a short amount of time, prompting Archer to explain the mission statement of the Warp 5 prototype. This amazing level of detail continues well into the 24th century, with Starfleet being able to make remarkable scans from exceptional range, even through their probe devices. For example, the sentient spaceship Gomtu had its entire internal structure mapped by a Federation probe out in the depths of unexplored space, information that the Enterprise D then had access to long before the first Starfleet ship entered the system where it was located. On top of this, Starfleet sensor systems have been able to discern the tiny, almost imperceptible fluctuations produced by cloaking devices from a myriad of powers. Often they'll detect a slight interference, or gravitational waves, an echo or some other energy pattern that an imperfect invisibility screen gives off, which is why the Romulans are constantly refining and tinkering with their cloaking tech, because it's an arms race against the Federation's sensor systems. It's fair to say, however, that the Federation has a wealth of information at its disposal too, which itself is another great resource as much of it is freely accessible, especially if you are a UFP member planet. Among these being the library of recorded histories from multiple cultures and useful star charts that are mostly kept up to date by routine survey missions. And finally, alongside sensor systems and information gathering, Starfleet's sheer scale makes for easy and safe travel through its territories for the most part. They have routine patrols and outside of wartime, travelling through Federation space is a real safe option. Just don't be trying anything illicit, and if you are, you best have a way of evading those highly detailed scanners we were just talking about. By the late 24th century, however, let's face it, Starfleet could pretty much optimise any area of development that it decided to focus on, which is what led to vessels like the Galaxy class being created. Downside, if you are outside of the Federation, you are not getting your mitts on their tech without strict supervision. Saying that, let's take a look at some of their members to get a few more ideas. First up, the Vulcans. So Surprisingly, although they had some of the most advanced technology of their time, their early incorporation into the UFP led to them sharing many of their developments. Early Starfleet charts were Vulcan, although these were notably incomplete and improved upon by Starfleet. Eventually, the other powers also matched the Vulcans when it came to their general level of advancement, and I think it's mostly down to the idea that Vulcan development was slow. They had Warp 7 before most other powers, but then remained at this capstone speed for hundreds of years until the UFP. 
Nowadays, it's mostly the cultural strengths that Vulcan brings to the table, in their efficiency, pragmatism and general scientific ethos, which in a roundabout way does lead them to contribute to many scientific fields. In Apocrypha, the Trill are generally a species likewise driven by scientific and cultural development, and one of the few worlds that when the Federation asked them to join, the Trill took years to evaluate the Federation to make sure that the UFP was good enough for Trill. <laughs> I love it. This means that they have a lot of scientific R&D to offer, most notably in the fields of propulsion. In canon, we have examples like Linara Khan, who was pioneering wormhole travel with progress being made. But extra sources take this further to explain that the Trill have a long history in developing methods of travel, and their warp drive was on par with Starfleet's by the 2200s despite being an independent power. Bajor is seen, mostly through the series Deep Space Nine but in Universe 2, as a culturally fantastic place to visit. They have always had a dab hand at agriculture, and even their pre-profit religions focused on maintaining a spiritual connection to their planet, making a focus on preserving and sustaining their resources. Naturally, this has led them to become a resourceful people in many facets of life, repurposing tools and developing a plethora of culturally distinct foods from their famed bounty. Perhaps it was simply Ben Sisko's love of cooking and Bajor that highlighted this, bringing it to the fore in DS9, but it does seem that Bajor has an incredible amount of dishes and foods available. As for the Bethazoids, their natural empathic abilities make them excellent negotiators and mediators. The very open species, much of their history and abilities means that they are generally great peacemakers, and any diplomatic retinue would benefit from the presence of such an empath. Let's take a look outside of the Federation for the last couple of choices for this video. When it comes to the Romulans, we obviously can focus on the aforementioned cloaking devices, but that seems a little obvious. Suffice to say that they do produce some of the strongest in the Alpha and Beta quadrants, mostly due to their constant usage. We could also look to their Singularity Core tech, which sees them utilise forced singularities as a power source as an alternative in some starship designs, but I would like to focus on their numerous advancements when it comes to general spycraft. They have a strong intelligence network and observation posts that can observe far away targets as well as powerful communications facilities designed not only to intercept enemy comms, but encrypt their own. And we're talking about Romulan levels of encryption here, fueled by thousands of years of paranoia and schemers trying to one-up one another. Just saying, a Romulan VPN or antivirus software would probably be the best in the business because they know all the tricks, and probably wrote some that no one else even considered. Even Romulan computer interfaces have legitimate dead ends that just have their user running in circles in case someone else tries to operate their systems. All this tech-savvy security means that they are professionals at reconstruction and decryption too, so go to them when you need something made secure, if you don't mind them reading through it all first. In a surprising twist in both novels and entries such as Star Trek Online, the Cardassians also develop more as a people in a post-Dominion society. Accepting help from the Federation to rebuild after the Dominion turned on them, Cardassia instigates numerous projects aimed not only at rebuilding, but reinitializing their own long neglected industries. Going from an expansionist power that used forced labour to one that shouldered its own workload led the Cardassians to actually excel in starship construction, bringing them to the fore when it came to the quality of their vessels. I like this addition to the lore, because it makes their redemption worthwhile and incentivizes change. As for the Klingons, oh, that one I'm not really sure about. For a start, they are a species dedicated to conquest, and even their warp drive was reverse engineered from the Herc. They developed cloaking screens by themselves and enhanced them through a brief trade with the Romulans. They also have a variety of technologies at their disposal from the various other prizes that they have acquired and are capable of replicating the science behind them. They also have an impressive spy network, which is not usually the first thing that comes to mind when you think of Klingons, 
but their operatives are many and surprisingly effective. Much like humans, the Klingons appear to be able to tackle anything they put their mind to and have built a repertoire of tech from numerous others. The difference is that they took most of it in combat. I guess then that leaves them with the most obvious specialisation, that of warfare. The gear and weaponry they put out there is simple, powerful and functional. If there is a specific strength to them that they can bring to the table, it's probably their millennia of history concerning battlefield tactics in all theatres of war. Look to individuals like Martok, who are genius level tacticians, to see just how effective this can be. I can't address every species in Star Trek here because this video would never end. But let me know if you'd like to see more on this. When I started this script I wanted to shy away from cultural stereotypes in Trek to focus more on the technology, and with some that is easier to do than with others. But with other species sometimes it's quite simply that their culture is the source of their strength and fundamentally the best thing they can bring to the galactic table. Suffice to say so far if we were building our own ship and crew it would be of proven Vulcan design with Starfleet sensor systems, trill propulsion and constructed by a Cardassian shipyard. It would have a Vulcan, a Klingon, a Betazoid and a Trill aboard with a Romulan security expert and a communications system. I would call it the USS Optimus NCC 733TH4X. Thanks for watching this video. What else stands out as superior developments brought to the fore by various Star Trek powers? Let me know if you want me to do a part 2 using your suggestions, and until the next one, I've been Rick and I'll see you later. Goodbye.